What is up guys, this is Max Square back with another video. Now you may or may not be aware, but Telestream, the producers of ScreenFlow, just released ScreenFlow 7. So I want to take a couple minutes to just look at what's new, see if it's really worth it for those of you who are maybe considering upgrading, or maybe if you're just getting into editing, if this is a good option for you. So let's go ahead and get started. So right off the bat, you can see that we have a new dark themed UI. This is awesome. I'm always a dark UI fan. Of course, you can change this back to the light option if you want, but this is a huge feature in my opinion. Um, they've also upgraded the icon down below, as you can see. It's a little bit more presentable on screen, so when you're making videos and sharing them with people, it's a little bit nicer and doesn't look like a huge camera icon. Another thing they've done is they've added better support for 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second footage. Um, you could always record, um, depending on your screen of course, record in 60 FPS, but uh, the editor wasn't always in 60 FPS. And so they've added a little bit easier access to those features. You can click on this 30 icon and you can get access to the screen dimensions, but then go ahead and change the timeline frame rate. So it's just a little easier to work with. Um, and when you're creating a new document, if you go to new recording, you can go to the second page and you have options to customize how you record there. You can change from highest to 30, 25, whatever you want. I don't even know why you'd go down to one, but it's there for those of you that really want it. Taking a look at their export settings, they've added a lot more customization. So they've added two types now. You can have the automatic route, which if you really don't know a ton about video and settings, this may be the better option for you because they do most of those settings for you. So you can just choose the fastest render settings or normal and slowest. Of course, this third option is gonna give you better quality, but it'll take longer to render. You can change the resolution as normal. But something new is that they've added motion blur options. So you can choose between light, medium, and heavy sampling. And for those of you who may not just be working with screen recordings, you know, you may be bringing in video and working on that. Um, or maybe if you're a gamer, this may be a huge plus for you. But down at the bottom, they also give you an estimated file size. So for those of you who are not huge fans of uploading directly to YouTube or Vimeo, or whatever you use, it's nice to know the size that you're gonna end up with at the end of your project. But like I said, there are two options. So you can jump into the manual tab and you just get some more settings like you would expect. So if you go to customize, you can now change the codec settings. Single pass is gonna be a little bit faster. Multi pass is gonna be higher quality. And then hardware accelerated is really like the fastest way to get it out. And the rest of the settings are pretty much the same as, as before. So I'm not gonna get too in depth with that. Another thing is they've added better support for H.264 footage. Um, so for those of you who do use ScreenFlow just as an editor and not actually screen recording, you may have found that working with that video could be a little bit glitchy and annoying at times. And so they've improved the quality of that and rendering speeds. Another thing with rendering is sometimes when you're working with ScreenFlow, the audio waveforms don't always generate. And for those of you who make a lot of mistakes like me when you're recording, um, then you wanna find exactly where that section starts and it's really hard to do without the waveform. Um, and so they'll show you when it's not always there, they'll show you a progress bar of how much longer it's gonna take and when it'll be done. Another cool thing is they've added a global library now. So you may know we, you have this library panel and this just is all the clips and audio and footage that you've brought in for this project. But if you click on the global tab, this is gonna be default to every project. So this is a huge feature for me because I always bring in like the Mac Square intro and outro and the audio behind my videos. And it's just kind of a pain to go bring that in every single time. And so just to show you, if I create a new document here, and I'll create a blank document, and I go to that global library, all those clips are already there for me, ready to go. They've also had some cool text animations. So I just created a blank text box here. You can go to the animation here, and you've got a lot of options for what ScreenFlow is usually capable of. Um, you can change this to like a typewriter effect, and I'll just give you an idea of what that looks like. You can change it to like a gravity, have it kind of fall in and bounce. Of course, you can change the duration, what direction it's coming in from, and the elasticity, so it's a little bit more bouncy, you know? And so there's, there's quite a few options there. Of course, you have the same for build out. 
Another cool thing is they've added shortcuts. So um, you actually have a lot of options here when you're pasting footage in, when you're trying to hide your desktop items. There's a ton here that you can mess around with. You also have the option to save and import different settings. So if you're sharing with people or you're working between multiple computers, that's a huge um, feature there. I've never been one for shortcuts really um, in other apps. I think it might take some time to adjust to this, but um, I think it's a cool feature for some people. Now I know I'm kind of rushing through all of these new updates, but I think there's not that many features that they've really added. Um, the ones I just showed you are kind of the most important in my opinion. There are some other small things um, like they've added touch bar support for the new MacBooks. You can upload to box.com. There's also a new graphic UI editor for the audio filters. Um, and just to give you a quick idea of what that looks like, if I add an EQ here, you can click this show on the custom UI, and then you've actually got an, an actual craft editor and not all of these progress bars and sliders, which is really annoying to work with. Again, I don't use these features as often. This may be revolutionary to some of you, but honestly, in my opinion, I don't really think it was worth jumping to 7.0 for this update. I mean, we were only on 6.2.2, I believe, and you could have really just gone to 6.3 with this. It's dark UI and a couple of features. The rest are really just enhancements in my opinion. And granted, I do think there's room for improvement in this app. I still think it's one of the best screen editors and overall just video editor apps out there. It's only 130 new. I only paid 40 for the upgrade from six. I've had it since three, so I've only ever paid that upgrade fee. So it hasn't been that expensive for me. But for those of you who are buying it new, I would still recommend getting ScreenFlow over other apps like Camtasia, um, and I know there's tons of other ones out there. But I use ScreenFlow for all my tutorials, and while they're not a sponsor, I would definitely recommend it to someone who's looking for something a little bit better than QuickTime or iMovie, something like that. And like I said, Telestream didn't pay me for this review, but I can't understand why some of you may think I'm biased. I just do really like this app, and I'll probably continue to use it for the foreseeable future. Anyway guys, that's been it. I hope that helped you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.